Hello everybody and welcome back to the Real Talking Podcast, episode 6 today with your hosts Ash and JD. Well, that's it. What do you mean? <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm still shocked by last week's intro. I thought there'd be a bit more. Well, I can do it every week if you want. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you'll have to pop up with a few of them yourself. Here, <laughs> One day, mate. Yeah, so uh, I think... I'll start off today's episode. Have you seen the viral video of Arnold Schwarzenegger fitting in his pothole? No. No, it made me laugh. I think he'd fit well with all these rest of the dickheads fucking doing the roadworks because it took him pretty much all day to fit in like a metre's worth of a pothole. And you can see him, like, he's got full production with him. He's got fucking cameras there and his mates. And it's like the shovel's overly heavy. Like, you don't need a shovel that heavy, mate. You fucking. He, and he's, he's slowly dragging it around and he's pushing it back and forward. And uh, even a lady pulls up, like, what are you doing? Oh, that's amazing. Fuck you, fraud. And, and is this outside his house? Or it's, it's well, I'm saying so, yeah, because yeah, yeah. you wouldn't just run. Well, imagine if he did just run the yeah. randomly do pothole. Just somewhere that he could drive his tank <laughs> yeah. around. He probably yeah. made the fucking pothole, yeah. didn't he? Feels yeah. bad. I oh, know. So he's fucking, yeah, he's filled it in with him and his mates. And I just thought, well, there's just no need. Like, to no need, such yeah, a, the production of it. Yeah, because yeah. it literally is just like a zoom in of the shovel fucking putting the, the tarmac, pushing it around, and it's like, oh, God, get a grip, mate. <laughs> but, I mean, fair play to him, he's doing something, but it, there's been a lot of them floating around uh, lately with these poles. There's some dickheads over here. Um, he's been putting pot noodles and pot holes. <laughs> and you think the money that you're wasting just to do that, and he's, he's there like, yeah, this pothole's taken 25 pot noodles. And he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> just, just one night he was just thinking, Obstantly. I've got a pot noodle, I'm yeah. sick of pot holes, I'm going to noodle those pot holes. <laughs> he's sick of the pot noodles as well. But it, the cost of that would be a lot more than just buying a bag of the tarmac. Yeah, the pot need hole. a few king size, don't you? Yeah, fuck you. Well, you don't get much more than a king size no. anyway. Just a big at all, Absolute fucking joke. And then speaking of prices, 68p for a Freddo now. What? The little Freddo fucking chocolate bars that we used to get for 10p. Yeah. 68p of fucking Freddo now. See, I remember it was outrageous when they went to 15 pence. Well, then it was 20 pence. Yeah, because it went up to 12p. <sighs> and then it was 15 and that. Do you remember the Taz ones as well? Yeah. Also, those Space Raiders crisps went up and they only get two for like 50 pence. Yeah, I think, I think I've seen them for 25p in some shops still, but they're a bigger bag now as well, so you can get the big bag, which yeah. is like the equivalent of four of the little ones for a pound, but uh, they're underrated to be fair as a crisp, the little, <laughs> the little space riders and the transformers as the little cars mm. and that. Oh, I remember as a kid trying to put the wheels on them. Yeah, they just, they'd never yeah, fit. they are an underrated crisp, especially with spicy flavour. Yeah. Oh, I didn't like the beef that. one. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, going off the back of last week's episode, with the paranormal uh, activities and stories, uh, there was another one that came to mind the other day that I forgot. Um, not a personal experience. It was uh, from Mother. Um, so, I mean, it's been about 15 years or so since Grandad died. Her dad. And... Uh, I remember her telling me, so she, she was in bed, um, and it was while Grandad was in hospital, because obviously he retired, hit the drink, and in the drink it, everything fucking started to fail inside of him, so in the hospital, just waiting to die, basically. And um, fucking, so mum's in bed, and as most people do, they've got the, the glass of water or pop or whatever on the mm. sides, and uh, she just fucking woke up because... It had just fallen on the floor, so she's obviously asleep, and it's not like she's whacked it with her hand because she'd always have to sit up to be able to reach it off the little solid table. So it's fell on the floor, and fucking, she hasn't thought anything of it. She said she's got up, she's got a towel, and she's starting to clean it off and whatnot. And then, like four minutes later, she gets the phone call that Granddad's passed. Um, but as she's gone to the hospital with Nan, it was. Uh, one of the nurses or the doctors that says as he was going he's reached for his glass of water like the little plastic mm. uh, cup of water and, uh, and he's knocked it off 
and that was his last movement. He's knocked his water off, and then he's just went. And so it was, it was literally the same time. And Mum always obviously associated it with his son having knocked his water off to say, "Yeah, that's that's me gone." It's weird, eh? Yeah, well, because it, it literally was the you know I can't guarantee it was the same second. It was probably he's fucking knocked it off past, and then fucking come to Mum and gone, "Woo, clean that up." <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just a fucking other mad one. Or there's no reason for it to have fell off in the first place. Mm. But uh, and it's just weird, like how they line up. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it was it was while she was cleaning it up, so you know, within minutes of it happening, she gets the phone call from the hospital. Cause yeah, they probably would have tried ringing Nan, but old lady doesn't know how to fucking use a phone, and to get out of bed to go and answer the landline would have took her. A while anyway, so yeah, as mum got the phone call, yeah, fucking weird. But then that also reminded me of the time at my sister's wedding in that fucking oh, haunted pub. Oh, yeah, I don't know how I don't know. Yeah, so that you actually yeah. had, had an experience, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was weird, yeah. yeah. Do you want to tell the story? No, no, I'll let, I'll let, I'll let you so, there. Just it was obviously a wedding, busy, and the main reception bit where we was at the bar was just, around just two just constant, visits, yes. and it was you know I'm a bit antisocial anyway and we was already at that phase where we don't want drinking around crowds of people so since there was that little pub to the side which was a part of the same venue we was like yeah sweet and yeah. to get our drinks from there sound and then we just was it at the table or was it the bar no we was at the bar and we was just having a little debrief about everything because it was a long day it was coming like midnight, like midway through the night. Yeah, because it's it, still early enough. It, it, it was, was still early enough. Six o'clock. But like, enough. for like the day, it was a long day. But mm-hmm. like, obviously, we're just relaxing. It was just after all the food, if I remember. Yeah. The bar was crazy. Let's go here. Let's just chill just, out here for ten. Have, have a beer here. Yeah. And we were just recapping about the whole day. Yeah. And yeah, it was, just, we was just, just at the bar. Oh, yeah, I can't believe it, I forgot about this. I know why I have mine in my hand. Because it, it was Kiefer's point, was Kiefer's, wasn't it? It was Kiefer's point, yeah. Yeah, and I just remember just seeing it in the side of my arm, just pushed to the side, as if like when you see yeah. these videos of the cats on the fucking the worktop or whatever, mm. and they just push a cup off the side. It just moved, mm. and it just went straight off and onto the floor. <laughs> How I remember it, it seemed, I can't believe I forgot about this last week, <laughs> it seemed to me like, you know when you see in the movies where someone slides a drink across the bar to someone that says, you know, in the movies yeah, yeah, can have another, well, cheers, and the bartender cheers. will just, Phew. yeah. I mean, he's pouring glass. I remember him having a bit, putting it on the on the bar, yeah, and that and thing just, just went, yeah, just like looking. not unbelievable, but he just to the point where we all stood back and was like, whoa, the <laughs> 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 ghost <laughs> guess what is the best? <laughs> <laughs> well, I ain't having this dick anymore, Bob. Yes. <laughs> At least it was keepers and not ours anyway. Yeah. Oh, I can't believe it. Yeah. That, yes. I can't believe it. I, yeah. Yeah, because I remember we obviously yeah, got another point for him. And we was telling everyone. And so, we were yeah. like, oh, no. No, no. there might be. I remember someone saying that. Uh, it was probably wet or yeah, iron angle. Yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. wasn't. It was dry. It was, it was dry and it, the, the bar it was, was flat. flat. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, you're not going to go nowhere and have served beer on a like, decline. No. I mean, I have been in pubs where they, they are atrocious like that. But, but like. But to the point where you can put in and slip off. If it was wet, yeah. Um, so if they didn't have the, uh, the the beer mat cloth things on the side, yeah. if they didn't put it on that, then you had the potential for sliding off. You know, I'll put up one point actually. Um, because it was a, a solid oak, not oak, sorry, solid wood uh, worktop, and it was never treated properly, never looked after properly. So because where you've got a, a crack in the middle, then over time the moisture is just going in and in and it bowed. Oh, right, um, yeah. And so, yeah, if, if you didn't have those mats on there, and if it was wet, it would slide off of there. Yeah. But it definitely wasn't like that in that pub. Anyway. No. It was all I can't off. believe I forgot about that, because that bear did fly. Like, yeah. Not, not, not like zoom, like, but like, to the point balance. where we stepped back and was like, whoa. Yeah. And he moved, because he fell off the end, didn't he, if I remember correctly? He yeah, yeah. Because we was right, right at the end of the bar, and he moved, I'd say, at least at, Meter maybe two meters, 
because we was all could we was kind of like circled around each other before I remember yeah, correctly. Yeah, it was, a, it was a good distance because I know we definitely had enough time to one to of admire us. It. Yeah, and one of us could have easily grabbed it, but it was just it was just in shock. <laughs> Because we could have just been like, no. <laughs> yeah, but now we've just stood there and just thought, what? You know what? The, I wish now we would have went back to the venue and asked if they got any camera footage because. Well, yeah, CCTV it, it, would have been nice. Yeah, 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 just just to validate that. Yeah. Uh, no one believed us though. We just fucking no. dismissed it, which was a shame. Shame for the points and for the, the staff having to clean it up as well. <laughs> yeah, because I, I remember actually, we was like, we didn't do it. He fell yeah. on its own, he fell on its own. Yeah. Strange. And so, moving on from that then, I had a thought the other day, because since The Last of Us, I'm seeing all these videos, there's apparently a zombie outbreak in China, um, and then there's reports of a fungus, well, the way that it is in The Last of Us. Mm. Um, and that someone's actually died from it. Uh, I think it was a scientist that's been um, actually researching funguses, uh, fungi for years. He's died of this disease that no other humans actually ever had before. But with that, I've just thought, well, if you're around it all the time, you're going to get it. It's going to evolve to be able to kill you. Um, but yeah, from that, all these zombie outbreaks and that, that are apparently happening now. I thought, now's the time to ask, what are we going to do when the world's fucked and we are a part of a zombie apocalypse? Well, you know, that everyone's thought this at some point. What would they do? And I'm sure like people would be like, listening, being, I'll do this, I'll do that. Yeah. Well, 14% of Americans have a zombie apocalypse plan. 14%. Well, I think with the Americans, they have to have more of a, a plan in general because the, a lot of them can get the tornadoes, the tsunamis and whatnot. Yeah. So they've already got a sort of emergency kit. And they have guns, which, yeah. Yeah. Which is obviously in that sense ideal. <laughs> but, yeah, a lot easier. So I think that. And probably, it's more vast, so you can get it, you can escape from it, I feel. There's definitely a lot of land. Actually. Yeah. So I just feel like, I'm not saying it'd be easier in America, but I think it would be. They've I think def- yeah, if, they've if, definitely got if, an advantage. If there. you have guns, it's easier. Yeah. 100%. You know, but yeah, uh, so I think, so are we, what kind of zombies are we talking about here? Are we going, are we going like Shaun of the Dead, like, you know, Lurkers, Homers from Zombieland? Yeah. You know, just, no, no, no. Or we going Romers that are attracted by noise that attack? Or if you want to carry on on the Zombieland theme, Hawkins, which are super smart, or the T-800s, which are hard to kill. Or we, we have an all of them, or just... What ones are we going for? Well, I think they would evolve over time themselves. So they? we're going to have, so in this scenario that we're going to talk about, we're going to have all these. So we're going to have Romans, Lurkers, the, yeah, the so. Hawkins, and the T-800. Yeah. Because so. I think at first it would be of that nature, that they'd just all be... Um, Rom, like just... Yeah, uh, just roaming around. And then listen, then get smart. And then yeah. Get, yeah, I don't think there'd be a... But that would be like, yeah, start, wouldn't it? Potentially, yeah. If, if you want mm. to be able to get on top of it and eliminate them all it, uh, yeah I, I think they would uh, just initially be not as slow as they are in short of the dead I think yeah. they still have because at first the muscles are still intact aren't they yeah. you know, they've still got the same strength and speed that you'd have when you're a normal person so they'd, they'd be able to run around catch and kill mm. so so we're going so so when he first, so in our scenario, at the first outbreak, we're going that they're still mobile enough to start off with. Yeah, because... So there's not going to be lurkers or, you know, or we just... Well, we, well, I, f- I think it's literally just down to the individual that's been infected. Okay. Because it's so if you're already, old, you're going to be a lurker. Yeah, if you're yeah. already unable to move properly, you're not going to be able yeah. to just have that ability yeah. once you're infected. So okay. So essentially, it's just... So, yeah, and would you have rules, Jack? Like Columbus, would you make cardio? Yeah, you, you, you definitely you'd have, have to make a rule book. Yeah, you, you're gonna have to start training. <laughs> Double tap. Yeah, easily because you can't. <laughs> you see too often, not just in the zombie films, but in all these horror films mm. and that, they think they've killed him, <gasps> and then they're not dead. Side now. <laughs> so no, just that is the no, no. I was saying that for another day. Let's yeah. bring you back, bring you yeah. back, bring you back. Yeah. So all right, day one. 
day one comes up on the TV, radio, you're in your house. Yeah. What's your day one plan? Well, so I think because the news announcements would be saying, keep your door and windows locked, stay inside, and wait for further information. So it's potentially the first week where you're living off of your supplies that you've got in the house and waiting to see what happens. Mm. The other thing I've been really thinking about this, if this scenario, how long would gas and electric and water be running for? In our scenario, we're saying two days or a bit longer. Again, it just depends on the reserves at that mm. point in time. If, if the, the gas tanks and supplies have just been so, filled, right. then we'd have... So in, in our scenario, months. we're going for a week's, week's worth, or is that too much? No, I'd imagine it would probably be a week at first. Yeah. And then uh, once it gets got to a point where staff, and emergency staff, whatever, can't go to the power plants and mm. whatever to keep everything running. Okay. That's when it would all right. go. So, so I just wanted to get a sense of like boundaries. So mm. okay, so day one, sorry, it happens. You lock all the doors, as you said. Yeah. What do you do from there? So yeah, you just wait it out because you you'd have to imagine that between the militaries and the police departments and that that they'd be able to sort it out straight away because. You'd think it would only be, say, no more than 5% of the population that's infected at first. So they'd be able to just dispose of them. But we're going along the lines that they're all fucking idiots. Well, you're, you're saying that, but physics students of Leicester University calculated that in as little as 100 days, humans would be outnumbered by a million to one. Yeah. And then, uh, what was that? And then, sorry, and everyone would be dead. In less than a year. That's what their conclusion that they've come up with. Yeah, so that's going along the basis that the military and the police and everyone else doesn't know what to do. Probably Everyone's panicking, I suppose, now. And it's probably a moral thing. They don't want to kill the infected because there's the mm. chance of curing them and getting them back to mm. the matter that they are. But you just have to go off of the, the way that you do see it on the TV and the films and that. that you've just got to fucking kill them. Mm. So... So that's your day one. I you, think that's, that's week one. That's week one. In, oh. Essentially, until you've got no food or water and that to continue surviving inside mm. your house, you've just got to stay in. But once once those provisions are gone, then you've got to start venturing out. Yeah. So, see, I've, I've thought about this loads because I've. So, my day one, a bit same but a bit different. Mm -hmm. Everything goes upstairs. Yeah. All the curtains, everything gets drawn downstairs. Mm -hmm. Upstairs, take all the tin food, run the bath, fill the bath up just in case, so it's maxed out, water. Do that to every sink, mm -hmm. fill every cup and sauce from with water that you don't need. Yeah. So you've got, just when that water does stop, yeah, yeah. you've got a reserve. Then what I would do, I'd look out the window, top window, I'd write every other car that's coming out, from neighbours. Mm. So if I know one of my neighbours has left and his car hasn't been there, it's all locked. Yeah. And that'd be obviously going for future preferences when you do have to venture out. So we day one we've got our same it's pretty much the same. You lock the doors, you yeah. wait out. So mm. going up towards week one. So say you've you've been in there for a few days now. What's your week one? So seven days onwards. So you've done the week. What's yeah. going on now? So now it's a part of yeah, go on, trying sorry. to get out of the house, mm -hmm. and then I'm talking to myself. So obviously I'm, I've got. I was gonna say what what yeah. what are you fucking flexing? Why are you going out there? So I've, I've already got my toolbox okay. and more bits and bobs in the garage. So I've got an axe. I've got several hammers, and it wouldn't be feasible. But if I could figure out a way of using it somehow, I'd have one of my drills. The thing is though with that, it's all close, close range equipment, so you'd have to be up in, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, but this is why it's got to be realistic for us, because mm. we, in the UK, we don't have the access yeah. to the guns, mm -hmm. so we'd have to rely on those close, close object yeah. weapons. You know, I've got bits of timber and screws and stuff that I could make myself bats, um, and weapons with, you know, the nails and screws and whatever sticking out with. 
So that I'll be doing that mm. towards the end of week one anyway, getting ready. And in terms of, so you've got you've got a toured up now. What are you wearing? In terms of, are you just it just putting layers on? on? Are you it depends on the weather because if it's hot, no, yeah, but you can't. It's hot with the zombies, mate. So like, it yeah. de- are you venturing five minutes or five hours? So like, so yeah, because again at first I haven't got. But then if it's sunny, wouldn't you go out in the dark? Do you know what, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So like, so anyway, all right. Well, yeah, so I wouldn't want to venture out much in the night because depending on what these zombies can do, but it's just want to be the same. Lights around. Yeah, but it's just the same as the day, isn't it? Like, it, obviously, yeah. night time doesn't mean it's darker. But it's visibility factor because I want to be able to know what I can see a potential danger at target coming towards me from mm. all around. Whereas at night, it's hard to okay. see, isn't it? Because they could be walking. Okay. Not behind a, a truck or something that's parked up. Right. You can't see. So let's just so say. Be more so daytime. All right. So let's just say it's your average day then. So yeah. perfect weather conditions. Wally yeah. flexing. So because I haven't got any uh, like a stab for a vest or mm. uh, any armor of sorts, like you know your knee pads, your elbow yeah. pads, a, a cycling helmet, because I haven't got anything. At first, I am just going out in the thickest jacket that I've got mm. to try and help any bites going through yeah. if it got to that point and then I'll try and find those sorts of shops where I could get some of that so like a bike shop where you've got the harder armour to be able to get some of that padding on you and just hope that the shops and that haven't been raided too much really mm. because obviously we saw it with the Covid pan- pandemic of how little there was in any of the shops and that and yeah. people stopped falling Stop falling bog roll. I mean, if it's a zombie apocalypse, you probably would stop falling the bog roll to be fair, and you'd learn how to make it because you can't. Well, I mean, we can't because it's not in our culture and the mentality side of things. It's not nice. The force of wiping your backside with your hand. So, it's yeah, venture out, try and find whatever food and other provisions that you can do. And then, would you bring that back to your home base, or would you then? think I need to move from this scenario because there's I've ventured out I've seen my surroundings yeah. you know there's not enough here I'm adventuring out well, what am I doing well if we if we're still able to be in contact with people so if I was still able to call you but then in, in a week you would say probably not I would say probably not I mean I'll, you would think it all yeah, I think in that first week I'd be making these phone calls and that though. Yeah. Just well, so obviously seeing how you are, everything's all right. And then, you know, immediate family, mum yeah. and father and that. And then since we're fairly close, I'd be trying to venture to you and then well, say picking up mum and that as well. So we can stay as a group and then finding somewhere, Sean and the dead style, bigger that we can all lay together then to make sure strength in numbers. Yeah. And that, so that would be your week one plan? Yeah. So so there's in your week one plan, that's what you would like to achieve? Yeah. Okay. So the strength in numbers, yeah. and it's just easier. So you can split up, right, I'm going to check this shop, we'll check that shop, and then meet mm. back here, and then you know then, oh yeah, they're all right, no, they've not come back, let's go and have a yeah. look. And yeah, then find a, a, a big enough building, so... You know, like a pub um, or a, a sports centre or something where it's easy enough to get a good few people in. I suppose, since there's plenty of them around, the old people's homes and the assisted livings and that, where there's multiple bedrooms. I know, there's multiple locked doors, don't know, where yeah, you have yeah. to be buzzed in. Yeah, and it's got all the, um, it's got your kitchen, uh, yeah. like big kitchens. And showers, that. multiple showers. Yeah, uh, a lot of them do have uh, like generator backups as well. Um, that would be another thing I'd find from somewhere, the little portable Gen- solar powered generators, so we could charge up torches, radios, yeah. and whatever, so we can still try and uh, stay in contact with people. And definitely a lot of walk talkies. Yeah. Raid as many right. of them as I could. Because, so my week one would be slightly different. Mm-hmm. I would, as I said, I'm lugging all the neighbours that have left and hasn't come back. So week one, food's getting low. I've got my water reserve. Yeah. What I would do, 
right the neighbours' houses, mm. going off the back, going in. But that's assuming that they've already gone. No, no, but that's that's what I'm saying. I've logged it. So this yeah. car, this reg, has left from number whatever and hasn't returned. So yeah. I know that I'd only do them ones. Yeah. So I'm in, riding, coming back. But then hopefully that's my week one. Mm. Oh, to while out as much as you can. So going off to your, so that's week one. So you're, let's go to month one. Where would you want to be at? Also, sorry, sorry, just before we move on. Mm. So month one, you'd probably need essentials. So according to all oh, that's interesting.com, what do you reckon the top five essentials would be for zombie apocalypse? Uh, so I'd say probably a means of cooking. So I.e. Uh, camping sets for uh, little gas stoves. Uh, it actually, mm, so that's not on the list. It, it kind of so tin food, so but not food that's not biodegradable is on there. Yeah, yeah. So you would you would assume that you no you'd need that with that yeah, to cook you. You know I know there's some weirdos out there, but you want to be able to heat up your beans and yeah. stuff, don't you? Um, but yeah, definitely your tin foods. Um, I'd love to say bottled water. Yeah, water is but, one of them. With the way a lot of these plastic bottles are, they ain't gonna last for too long. So you'd end up going through the bottles sooner rather than later. Well, that's what I'm saying about the water reserve. That's what everything's for. Yeah, but uh, so again, going with the water scenario, then I'd be because I I remember it from school how to make a water filtration system. So I'd be able to get water yeah. from the rivers and whatever, and get oh, some true. fresh water that way. Then so I wouldn't rely too much on it. But yeah, yeah, at first you would, you'd get as, as much bottled water as you could. Um, uh, after that really... Uh... There's one that you've just mentioned that you would need to use that equipment. So your walkie-talkies, they need to be... Yeah, so we batteries. need... Yeah. yeah, so so utility supplies, including batteries, that's like one of the must-haves. See, and that's, that's why... I'd have to find one of those solar powered generators because a lot of these devices, the same as the way your, your mobile phones are at these. But wouldn't days, that make loads of noise though? No, no. It's it's literally it's just a solar powered panel on the top that charges a battery. Oh, so not right. the generator. Um but I would look at that further down the line. But uh, yeah, it's just a big battery bank. Yeah. And so the solar power charges it up and then you can charge your walk towards mm. and that because the way a lot of devices don't require your double A's, your triple A batteries and whatever now, um, you, you'd need a means of recharging them. Yeah. Because the last walkie-talkies that we had work-wise, it was just on a little charge station. Yeah. So you'd need to be able to do that, really. Um, so you got three. So there's two more. One of them... One of them, I was kind of like... Hmm... Oh, I didn't think it was. Oh, sorry, going back to utility surprise. A can opener. That's underrated. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, um, that's something that when you're panicking, you're not like, fuck, I need this can opener. Yeah. You will need that. And uh, obviously torches, what you just said, and with the batteries. Yeah. I think the, the tin opener that I've got, because uh, it, it opens bottles and stuff as well, so it definitely mm. be a part of what... Uh, as I leave the house, grab it because it's a magnetic one. It's on the side of the fridge, so I wouldn't miss it. Um, yeah, again, it, you know the tools in general because I, as I say, I've got them. Mm. They're, they're going straight into the van and that, so they're getting transported around. But so, that—that's saying that there's diesel left, fuel left, or whatever you're. You know, you've only got the range. I, I think ideally you'd only have the range. That you, your van's got. I don't think you'll be able to go to the petrol station a week in, fill up, and it'd be too dangerous on the first few days to do that. Yeah, but see, I don't know if I've already mentioned it before. I know in my head how I'd be able to uh, rig an electric vehicle to be able to charge itself up mm. as I'm driving. So, so you'd have to, you'd have to uh, down the line get an electric vehicle. Yeah, yeah, just you know, find it, steal it, whatever means you have to do but 
Yeah, borrowing the answer. Away. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> borrow with the intent to <laughs> never give back. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, as, I've, I've got in my head how I can do it because your normal, your normal days on petrol cars, they have an alternator in them mm. that charges the battery as you're driving. Um, and the, the pure easiest way of doing it is where you've got your 12 volt adapter, uh, what used to be the cigarette lighters yeah. in the cars. You plug one of those in, and then I've got one at home where it goes into the 12 volts in the car, and then you can put your plug into it to say charge your phone, uh, boil a kettle, or whatever. So you have that plugged into your car, it's powered while you're driving, and then you have your power lead to charge your vehicle plugged yeah. in at the same time. Now, fair enough, it's not going to charge up at the same rate, but you'll be able to get more mileage yeah. out of it. And then that's where your solar power generator comes in then to help charge it afterwards while you're in a stationary mm. mode. So there's two more left. One of them, as I said, I wouldn't have ever thought this would be on there, but I suppose some people would probably would be on there. Uh, clothes? You've got to be able to stockpile clothes to a certain degree. Yeah, but... And no footwear as well so a part of the clothes i agree you you'd obviously have to have some clothes down the line but no so the other the other two is first aid yeah so sure. obviously it's not going to help you if you get beat but look paracetamol and then the other one this is the one that hygiene equipment see so, I, I wouldn't expect that yeah to yeah no not when i seen that i was just like you would use yeah I, I would want to have as much toothpaste available as yeah. possible because, when you think about it yeah but, yeah it's horrible when you just wake up in yeah. the morning you've got a bit of a, a stanky breath yeah. so yeah I'd, I'd, personally I'd want to have some of that I don't think I'm really going to be that bothered about deodorants or anything but mm. yeah dental health because I've had several teeth issues wisdom teeth coming through and that so I know how bad that problem can be uh, so yeah that's uh, yeah the first day definitely I didn't think about that um, but again I've got one in the van so that would be yeah. going around with me. So, all right, so let's go into month one. We're so, 30 days in. Yeah. Where are you? So at this point, yeah, uh, going off the principle that I've been able to find uh, a big enough building like an old people's home or mm. something, that I've been able to get the closest that I need to in there and we're safe. Um, then it's... Because ideally, I think month one is when food would start becoming an issue. Yeah. I think, especially with, obviously, in your scenario, you've got loads of people. Mm -hmm. More, I know you have more people looking for food. Yeah, yeah. But obviously, it's more mouths to feed. Well, at that point, I've already uh, set up a garden patch. Now, from what I know, potatoes are the easiest thing to grow. So, I've... I literally have a whole garden full of potatoes. It's diverse, and you can. Have you ever them. grown potatoes? I've left them in the cupboard and they've started growing themselves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the, <laughs> so you'd learn, you'd, yeah, yeah, you'd, you'd learn. you'd try to learn this stuff. Yeah. See, with me, I, I think month one is when people start turning on each other. Thirty days in. Yeah, there'd, there'd be a lot of that. That's yeah. why you'd have to have your closest with you, not interact with your neighbours or whatever yeah. that you're not really close with because you don't know them enough. Mm. So that's why we would have to be the closest to people. Mm. And then, yeah, so I've already got the new vegetable patch going. Um, and then, yeah, while you, you're out, you're getting your supplies in general, whatever packs of seeds that you can find, tomatoes, um, your, your pears, your apples and whatever, and then have that growing. Mm. So you're already starting to... St like future proof yourself you've got that, that mm. potential farm on the go um, again with all that I've, I've already got my water filter system set up which at first it probably would just be uh, as I've rated as that getting the Brita filters mm. and just sticking a load of them to get back so I've got the rainwater going through so I've got a constant new supply I know it's not going to be uh, a constant supply overall in general because it's not always raining but there'll be enough to be able to ration and mm. stay together. And yeah, just get the rules into place that, well, yeah, we've got to so move food to be able to last two you, weeks. We so you, ration it you wouldn't move away with, when, once you've got everything that you've just acquired, would you 
would you move to the countryside within our first month where it's less dense or would you where you this old people some or this sports hall just, that's that's your yeah it just there. depends on where the crowds are infected are if well you would if, say it's if they've stayed local you would think it's city the sort of when you the more you're in the city the more yeah so if, if they're in you know city area i'm not going to set up camp well by them but I'm one be you know, if you hard to find a sports hall or an old people's home yeah, mansion or something, a building of that okay. type where it's got enough rooms to be mm. able to, you've still got your own privacy, but you're a part of a little community. Yeah. Because I, I think, off the top of my head, it'd probably only be about 15 people roughly that I'd love to try and have as a group to start yeah. off with. Um, I mean, yeah, a, a, in the countryside, a, a nice mansion of sorts. That would be ideal because a lot of those do already have a wall around them, mm. so you've got some sort of defence and plenty your land. So that's me, my garden patch, yeah. my little farming corner. Um, and then it's a matter of yeah, getting the means of teams. Right, you're venturing out today to see what supplies we can get. Maps, you can't undervalue maps in this situation as well. A lot of people won't even yeah, know yeah. what a map is because they're just used to it as a, an app on the phone. But we're at that age. The old I to Z. Yeah, we used to have them. Um, and then with the army background, as minimal as I have got it, I know how to read a map properly. Um, so I'd be marking off, well, we tried this area, we tried that one. Yeah. Just little Lexis. And I'd have several maps the same. So that would be. A yeah, do map. not go here like there's too many that are over there kind of thing yeah so one that I've, I've put marks on saying look right that I've, we've got all the supplies from there supplies from there supplies from there so don't go there anymore and we know what areas we haven't yeah. explored and then a, a separate map of saying well that's that's a lot of infected there this one seems mm. fairly quiet so it's a potential safe zone uh, and then one just completely blank so you still know where to go where you can where you can go, just read the map in general. Okay, so in your month one, obviously, we've spoke about the zombies, but then you said you know you've still got the tools, and obviously now this time there'd be a lot more zombies a month in than there was a week in. Mm-hmm. So, what's your plan then, in case the mansion you all your accommodation you were staying at just got too dangerous you know you invested all your time putting these seeds and everything in setting up base and you had to go no time to get everything you know i'm just i want to cover this aspect so yeah so you've got you've got your accommodation yeah she goes you know she goes off and you literally just have to flee run away yeah because so obviously because your month one then hopefully I just want to get like a branch off of this one because obviously if that works well you could do it for months yeah I think while you're doing all the general prep of making huge proofing for food you're going to be sorting out your weapons as well so while you're raiding these shops you're going to find other things like your, uh, your machetes your odd swords here and there and more axes mm. um even, even though it's only a short time weapon, but your bows and arrows, your crossbows and that, until you know how to physically make a sturdy enough arrow, because it always cracks me up, like your bloody pork on the Avengers. It just infinite, infinite amount of arrows. It's not, you got 12 in your fucking little pouch on your back. So He does go and grab them back. Well, you do see him on some clips. I know he can't grab all of them, but I know what he's saying. Yeah, so he shoots about 20 and collects about two. Yeah, you're only going to be able to do that, collect so many back. So you, after a certain time, you've got to learn how to make them. And then they're not going to be as good as the ones that you've already got with the equipment. So it's not a long time mm. weapon that isn't. Um, so that's why once you, you're raiding everywhere, you're going to find these other... Mm. Essentially, you go to a, a Salco, hardware shop, a tool shop, and get whatever tools can be used as weapons, and then still make your own as well. Mm. Now, I wouldn't want to be wasting too much timbers and wood materials, because you're going to need as much yeah. of them for potential buildings you're going to make in the future. But when you go to a sports shop and you find these bats and that, 
adapt those for weapons. So as an emergency ship, you've got to go. You've already got basic weapons that you can travel around with if you're on foot, or if you have still got a mode of transport to be able to go, mm. and you've got defence that way. And then just always have your general backpack of your emergency stash. Um, because again, at, at some point, you'd be able to get into an army barracks where they have a good supply of your ration packs as well. So if you could get those ration pack stall supplies, then it's lower trying to wait more room in your bag to be able to mm. travel and last a couple of weeks. Uh, so I'd have those emergency procedures in place. But with the building that I've got, I would be making sure that I've got a substantial uh, security yeah, system. Yeah, like fortify. In. Yeah, mm. so you know everything's barricaded downstairs. That it's not. It, there's one way in. There's a secret way out, yeah. but it's not a direct door. It's it's an emergency exit of sorts. So you're only coming in and going out of one main way. Mm. But I don't know if we're fortunate enough that there's a a window with a fire escape set of stairs on the side or something, then that's your way out in yeah. those emergencies. Uh, I think by that point, though, the main threat would be other little groups of Fraction. people trying to get get in. Get in. Um, but so that's the thing. It's It comes to a point where you're not just fearful of the zombies, it's other people trying yeah. to take it. Yeah. So you'd have to quickly really get it out of your head that you can't just, we're not attack anyone. If someone's coming at you, forget that they're yeah, yeah. infected or not, and just whack them but then, the So you would you become the attacker? So what I'm saying is, you know you're playing that nice guy routine, as, mm -hmm. you know, if someone attacks you, you I'll attack them back. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't. Because there's never been a zombie that I can think of, like movie or series where they've, Play the aggressor. I think walk, I didn't watch all of the Walking Dead, but where up to I watch it, they was always the ones getting attacked and retaliating. Or that's how it was most of the time. Yeah. Um, I've still got to watch the last couple of seasons of that, to be fair. But it was more so they don't only retaliate and then yeah. attack there. So would you be the aggressive? So say you, you know, you've travelled out from your homestead. Board shop, baseball bats, mm -hmm. walk in there, three of you, three of them. Would you wait for them to be like, fuck off? Or would you just be like, Michelle? Uh, uh, you'd have to just evaluate you'd... each individual situation because if they're being sound and like, yeah, yeah, all right, lads, right, yeah, mm. we're just going to get what we can, we're going to stay away from yours, yeah. then you just leave each other alone. But if they started, coming towards you in that way mm. that they're going to attack, then you just have to go yeah. for it because you've got to defend yourself and just hopefully win. Yeah. See, my month one is a bit different. So I would have stayed in the house as long as possible, rationed off all the neighbours, mm. and then I would have got my golf clubs, you know, drove to Costco. Now, I'm driving to Costco only if it... When you know this outbreak started, I knew Costco was closed. If it was open, I knew it'd be ready. But so say you know it came out overnight, and I know Costco was closed up. I I would try to break into Costco and live there, and just live off everything in there yeah, yeah. for a few months. Mm -hmm. But if not, I would obviously have to expand the area locally. I'd still stay local in the month one. Mm -hmm. And just set up little markers, you know, look with a pen, just like on the number, like on the house. Just if I've cleared it, if there's zombies in there, I can see through the window. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the maps, I didn't think about that. That, that yeah, would be you, you definitely you, need maps. Almost, like, you would need that. That's just like yeah. the most holy grail thing you'd yeah. probably need. Was, I'm the sat nav king guy, I'm all put more maps on, on, on the phone for everywhere that I'm going. Or even if I know where I'm going, I'm it's still so putting it on because with the Google Maps it has the uh, updated traffic. Tra yeah, yeah. So it, it tells me if there's any roadworks or whatever. So 
I'd, yeah, I'd have to, I'd have to have maps because I'd, I'd just end up getting lost. Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. A, there's only so much general knowledge of, well, yeah. all right, I'm heading to Manchester and then now I'll carry on this yeah. way, I'm going to head and well, end up in bloody Liverpool or go this way and then yeah. go towards Newcastle, whatever. Only so much you know. Really. And you would, you would assume that you'd have to stay off the motorways because obviously we're just going off what happens in the movies. That's where a yeah. lot of traffic happens, and then obviously there's now a break there, and the cars left there, and you have yeah. to move cars. It's a bit dangerous. You want to stay on the country roads, the side roads, to get to your destination, which that's when the map is just perfect. Yeah, it's key. So let's move on to month three. Mm-hmm. In the scenario that you've still got your homestead, mm-hmm. your shit's growing, you're yeah. thriving. Month three, what's what's the plan? Where do you want to be in month three? I think for a lot of this now, it's, it's trying to make contact with any kinds of authorities, like your armies, governments are most likely for them. Um, so it's, it's trying to find out and keep in touch to see where we're at. Yeah. Are, are we looking like we're going to get on top of the pandemic? Or is it just like everything's definitely fucked up? And, and I suppose how far it's gone. So it, yeah. let's say, for instance, it started in the UK mm-hmm. as it spread to Europe and if it spread to Europe as it spread to Asia as it spread yeah. to America South America mm. I suppose that's a key thing you would have to know yeah. is it worth trying to get a boat or just staying yeah well I think a lot of that information of how far it spreads uh, is it a global pandemic you'd be able to find that mm. in the first couple of weeks while the media because it is another thing I always thought. If it if it's out in the UK, I know what happens straight away. Just get new. The country would just get yeah, yeah, nuked. Just Obviously, get off just in country. Ireland, it's so easy to isolate that. Just nuke that off. Everyone puts like everyone would just set up ships like off the coast, like ten miles off, mm. and just no one comes into this area, no one passes in, and that's what. Yeah, that that's what would happen. But we're going to scenario that maybe it's happened in a few places. It's spread quicker than you can imagine. Because otherwise, that would happen. So yeah, it would have to be the way that the coronavirus. Yeah, yeah, yeah just either. yeah. Um, but again, it, it, if it was just isolated to the UK, it still would spread because mm. there'd be the royal family, there'd yeah. be the the, like the highest of the politicians, and uh, all these other people with money. That would be able to get Flame off. time, yeah. And does there be someone that's already infected? A mm. part of even if it's just one person out of these couple hundred people that are managing to get off the country, yeah. There'd be someone that's infected that's just not showing the signs yet, and so it would end up spreading. Yeah. Um, and so it'd be how the rest of the world deals yeah. with it then, because they wouldn't be able to move everywhere. So in, in your month three, you're trying to expand, you know, your knowledge of what's going on. Yeah. Um, you know, just, every, everything's going well in terms of you growing your own vegetables, your potatoes, your homestead's going well, you're thriving. Yeah. Then anything else? Well, it's, it's still just because uh, you, you're constantly improving the security, making sure your, uh, your fences are sound. Um, you, your doors secure your windows and whatever and building on your arsenal of, of weapons um, because you're not going to be able to find a bloody weapons expert that knows how to fucking get a a, a, a kiln and melt down fucking metals to create bullets or anything so you, you've got to make sure that you, your hammers and your axes and whatever any, any blunt objects as a weapon is still sturdy and any sharp objects stay yeah. sharp. So you're constantly working on that. Um, and just, just plowing through, just surviving, mm. making sure that everyone's fine. I suppose you'd have a system at this point of a little bit of a, a round, um, so a, a little team that just walks yeah, around the perimeter. You'd have a community and a committee of, of rules and regulations. You'd have people yeah. would have, know their roles. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got this team walking around, making sure there's no potential targets, mm-hmm. trying to break in or whatever, and just checking out for any infected, any of the zombies. Um, 
And yeah, just just try and abide out as much as you can because you need to. It's going to get to the point then where you're like, all right, is this life now, or is there a, a hope of getting back to how we used to mm. be? So I think that would be the, the next couple of months, really. As long as I know that I'm safe and I'm, I'm keeping on top of any threats that are coming in, that's it until we know where we are long step. Mm. Um, but where would you be? So my month three, as I said, I think by month three I'd have to leave my where my house that I've set up for three months. Mm. I've rallied everything near a boy. I need to move on. But if you was able to get into the Costco, though. Yeah, if, if it was in the Costco, I'm chilling. Yeah, you're, you're good I'm chilling. for the whole five I'm months, good. to be fair. And I'd, all I'd have to do is just, where the doors is, just fortify it, just push everything mm. towards those doors. I'm chilling. Like, it's got everything in there, bikes, exercising, clothes. I'm good. I've had yeah. dogs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, That's a good point, dogs. So obviously, you've got your dog. Yeah, he would come with me. Yeah, I've got mine. Would you get more? No, I'd just keep. Would, you, would I get, oh, pick I'd... up more dogs along the way? Yeah, yeah, so as so, you're going around and you find dogs that have been abandoned and stuff, would you not keep them? So, in my scenario, no, because obviously if I'm in the Costco scenario, no one's come in. That's it. That, mm. That's me. But in, in the sense that maybe Costco was already open and it's been raided, I'd have to leave my base. And look, and it comes in which direction do you go? Where do you go? Uh, so for me, I think I'd try to find a little village that's way off. You know, find a map, find, you know, a good village where it's not, it's it's in my range, but it's yeah. not, it's not a 10 minute drive from anywhere. And you only can go through, through you know, it's hard to get to, but it's feasible yeah and try to get there and hopefully they have set up something like you've said where there's a home base because they've got the area that, you know maybe two ways in and out so they can just fortify it down mm. down the road a little bit yeah I'll do a few little villages yeah um, and then obviously try to you know get join their community yeah yeah that, that, that I think that would be my, obviously if Costco works and it's locked and I'm in, I'm sorted, but mm. going after it's been ready, I have to make a decision, find somewhere, hopefully it works, and yeah, so, yeah, so month six, so that's our half a year now. Yeah, so you, you've you've already gone down the, the scavenger route, trying to, trying to get make the, friends and get into someone else's but, community, yeah. I'm the one that's got the community. Yeah, but I, I'm, I'm doing it from, because, in the sense of, you know your own space, you know what, you know, if you're going to a mansion 100 miles away, you should, you've done, every, I know you've got the maps, but, mm. you know, you don't know what's around the corner, you know, you could be there for two days, and there could be a herd coming in from, mm. from, you know, from, from, from somewhere, so, yeah, as where, if you're on your, your homestead, you know the area, so you know if that was to happen, you know the best route. And you know, like, you know, just everyone would have to, uh, everyone's different, but you'd, you'd know, you'd have a plan set up, like, if, 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 if something, if she went to plan, you'd have that plan ready just to escape. Yeah. And I think it'd be easier in your own place. But that, that, that's just my, that's just mine. So, yes, yeah, so month six, sorry, you've got, what, where do you want to be month six? Because yes. your one, in your, in your thing, everything's going well. Uh, but that you know you're growing so what I'm saying like what, what if it's not going well yeah because it's alright to say this is you know I'll grow this I'll grow that but yeah if if, Pete's went, if things went sideways then yeah you've you've got to do that you've got to find another home mm. you, you, if you can find someone else that's already done the same got a little yeah. community of their own trying to convince them that you, yeah. you're on the same mindset and you want to be a part yeah. of it and con uh, contribute then yeah you'd have to do that um because i always feel with little villages obviously there's farmers and they've obviously grow stuff so yeah. food would become easier because mm -hmm. you have people with that knowledge yeah so 
So yeah, if if it did have to leave, then find another community to join mm. would be the top. But it's saying everything's going well. But what do you? If everything's going, going well, well, then yeah. it's I'm, I'm basically set up by month three, mm. and it's just the continuation of uh, improving the grounds that I'm on, yeah. and making sure everything's running sweet, uh, and yeah, just make sure everything's fortified, yeah. and then still trying to make contact with any higher yeah. power that could give us information. I love the fact that we're going for like best case scenario and then like worst case scenario. So like say. Month six, that's your best case scenario. You're doing mm. well, chilling. Month six, what you like? She happens. So yeah, if, if, if you know you're getting raided by other humans that potentially got guns or the zombie herd or some TA hundreds, mm. you've got to flee. What's 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 the plan in your head by month six? So I think if it was right, well, I've got to fucking go out. I can't trust anyone apart from. The few immediate people mm. with me, then it's a matter of I've already got several of, uh, emergency supplies um, and camping equipment. I would have definitely raided that as yeah, part of the initial yeah. raid. And then it's just finding uh, a, a woodland area that's got plenty of natural camouflage and just essentially trying to set up camp mm. in places like that. Yeah. Always on the run. Yeah. Making sure I don't get found, or if I do get found, I've got more general weapons to defend myself. Um, I mean, again, ideally in that situation, you find a nice wooded spot that you can set up those little traps. Mm. Um, but if you're trying to keep on the run every couple of days, then it's finding areas like that. Uh, it all just depends on how everyone else is. Yeah. You know, we had a similar scare with the corona where people just didn't want to fucking do anything did that uh they didn't want to look out out for themselves there was a lot of selfish people that didn't care Mm. and they still went out and fucking did whatever they want at parties and stuff so it would rely a lot on how everyone else is but if you could find a a good community and get in with them it would strengthen numbers okay it would be all right so year one let's do best case scenario in terms of you are you know your homestead's doing well it's growing mm-hmm. more fortified more defense it, what, what's after a year because obviously it's a year now it's coming up to the anniversary i think what does it does it change after a year do you get to this to the point where this isn't enough or i think in general because you've already got the knowledge of whether there's a potential cure for it or uh, if the numbers have gone down or if people are still getting infected and the, the population of the zombies is growing still I'd imagine you, you'd have that sort of information so you'd have to sort of just not essentially give up but right now I've got this community set up we're self-sustained as long as we can keep it safe mm. just stay up this is life now. yeah still have a little bit of trying to find out keep in touch with whoever you have managed to get in touch with whatever scientists or whatever still keep that little contact yeah. but until you find out whether or not it's ever going to go back to some sort of normality yeah. where there's no infected anymore just leave that long yeah no i, I agree because obviously if more year one i can survive in costco for a few years mm-hmm. best case but so worst case i'm about to move and i'm about to flee to community that we spoke about you'd have to there'd have to be a point where you'd have to send people out as far as they, they can go and just broaden your circle of search mm-hmm. and just you know just to make point of contacts and just to say well you know up north's a lot safer the you know we can bring our community up there yeah eventually because there would be several communities and you'd have to start training mm-hmm. you'd and yeah because you know the uh the most likely be so I've already got my farm set up um, so I'd have food to be able to trade and hopefully enough water that I'll be able to trade as well and then someone else would have uh, someone that knows how to make clothes so they've already got mm. loads of material they've probably got a couple of sheep that they're getting the wool from and whatever so you'd be trading food and other supplies um, medicines and that as well someone so medicines would be key yeah someone would have been able to stock all them um, and most likely fortunate someone would have a doctor or 
some sorts mm. that still knows how to make your general voodoo medicines you know, out of your natural resources, plants and whatever. So yeah, it'd be a, uh, a, a big uh, civilization of mm. trading. It would go back to how ways were, you know, the old Victorian times and before that, before the, well, before there was governments essentially, before currency, mm. where you would, I've got this, right. I want that, let's, let's make that deal. Um, and yeah, I, I think that would be, that would be the only way really. Uh, at that point, most of the, my electric car that I've managed to rig is on its last legs, the tyres are fucked, suspension's gone mm. and whatever. So I would have had to have made a newer system of uh, like a, a trailer, a cart, and then just push bikes. Yeah. So not the old horse and carriage way, but it's bikes now. So you can, it'll take a while to get from, like, say, Birmingham to Manchester. But that's what yeah because so after a year yeah, all the brakes be seized all the tyres be flying every car You even if yeah. you had a full tank of petrol yeah and it know. doesn't matter if you've got a mechanic they're not going to be able to get all the supplies to mm. be able to keep repairing them so you'd have to get uh, new ways of that because it's it's a lot easier to fix a bike than a car you know we can do it and we're thick as shit so yeah that would have to be the, the longer game of that um, I mean if you could get horses and other uh, like say donkeys or whatever that you could do that load bearing that would help but then you have to see uh, along the sides of that small mouse to feed yeah um i'd definitely have a, a little herd of dogs because that would help on the defense of sort of things as well because if there was a little look well enough herd coming or whatever, as well yeah uh and then yeah so if there's a herd coming or whatever you know they're, they're already barking but then again that might so that's the it positive might attract, but it might attract as yeah, well but you're training them Mm. You know, Lassie was a popular film well before he was alive and you know how many times did Timmy get saved from the well <laughs> and uh, it, it, it would have to be that sort of training yeah. right they know something's there come and notify someone you know dogs dogs are clever than us Jesus Christ you know so it, it wouldn't be that hard to be able to get them to do that and plus they'd be able to smell them wouldn't they yeah you, you could learn you could learn them and need to yeah you know we've got these dogs that can uh, smell cancer i suppose it would that. it would kind of like the you know you have the sniffer dogs when they have dead bodies that are buried you would assume that the smell would be similar to that being yeah, yeah, dead and are rotting away yeah so yeah kebab kebab what are they called uh, cadavers. Cadavers, yeah it. yeah so the, the dogs would be a good show um yeah i'd, I'd have to have them and so yeah after the 12 months that's it. That's life, then. Yeah. That's just the way of life. If, if there's definitely no way that, you know, the scientists and the, the government, well, let's say the government's most likely gone, but the armies and whatever, if they haven't been able to get them off and find the cure or whatever, then that would be it. be rebuilding a new civilization. Mm. Um, would I mean, be much different on the end of your 12 months? No, no. Obviously, if I'm in Costco, I'm good. If if I'm in a scenario where I've had to move and I've, you know, I've become a member of another society, like a village scenario, it'd probably be the same as well. You, the end game, would probably yeah. be the same. Um, but I'm just thinking, how long do you reckon it'll take before the zombies to die off? In terms of, there's no everyone that's alive is too well hidden. Mm. I think it depends on their food sources because if they do actually need brains yeah. or fucking human meat or whatever to survive can they only survive off of human meat or can they survive off of eating wild deer and rabbits well, and whatever cows and everything and then over these 12 months have they evolved enough to be able to uh, catch any of the, the wild rabbits and that to survive mm. on them uh, yeah I think it would be down to that how, how have they evolved and that's where you come onto mm. these other uh, variations um, but if, if, they, if they stay thick and they can't really hunt for themselves and fend off of other meats and whatever um, then I think after a couple of years surely they've all died out by that point yeah. the people that have stayed on their own and just wanted well, the streets well, they yeah, they've either been found and are dead or they've not been able to mm. feed off of them so yeah over 
over a certain amount of time, surely they just die. Because again, there'd only be so much before they've gone through all of the, the wild animals if they can survive on them. But then it's that then. Do the wild animals get infected themselves? We could branch off. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that could be a whole other episode. Yeah. Of I suppose if, I, if there was to do like all the animals, you just have no chance. There'd just be too many. Yeah. And I'd, I'd definitely stick to the Irish roots then of just living off potatoes because I don't eat too much different variation of foods. So, uh, yeah. Hopefully, it never gets to no. that anyway. But I think, in general, we've come to the same conclusion at the end of it. Yeah. If you, we can survive. Then, for you, uh, then you just wait out, then I suppose. Yeah, we've, we've got to that point of having You've societies and new new world order. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think hopefully everyone still stay tuned and they agree with us. Yeah. But if they have got anything different, then uh, send us an email. I'm still waiting for you to send an email or a, uh, a tweet or anything. Um, so it's it's still the same socials, the Real Talking Podcast, uh, Twitter's Real Talking Pods, uh, Real Talking Pod at gmail.com as well. Send in questions. What would you do in yeah. these the, scenarios? Because everyone's got a different opinion on this. Yeah, everyone's, yeah. everyone's, what does, does everyone has thought about if zombies was to happen, what the fuck would I do? Yeah, there's got to be some psychopath that's listening <laughs> and we're like, Nah, I don't care if they're a zombie or not, I'm just going to kill them because yeah. there's no laws going on there. So if you're one of them, send us in. And uh, again, if you've got any ghost stories or anything that you want to just give your experiences, send them over. Uh, just questions or general questions, yeah. Yeah, you know, if, if you want to know how big Ash's cock is, then just ask a question. You probably won't answer because it's tiny, but you know, just send it in. But I'm happy with that. Pod? It's a pod. Thanks for listening.